And welcome to another episode of Wandering Through Wayne's World. With me is Carl Barnowski. Did I get it right? Yes, sir. That's because I always ask, like right before I turn <laughs> on the camera, just to make sure I get it right. And Carl, you're with Barnowski Financial Services? Bar Barnowski Financial Group. Group, okay. Yes. So what do you do? Basically, um, we are a financial advisory firm. Okay. Um, we really uh, focus our efforts on retirement income planning. So there's, a, there's a few phases of the financial advisory business, if you will. There's that accumulation phase where people are accumulating money, um, and then there's the phase where they're approaching or they're in retirement, and now it's time to convert to income, and that's, that's really what we specialize in. So one of the things that I learned years and years ago, I had no money, you know, like most, and I had a financial planner come on, and he told me, it doesn't matter if you have a dollar, a million dollars, or a hundred million dollars. You should start your financial plan today with whatever you got and move forward from there. Otherwise, you'll never start that plan. That's absolutely true. I mean, even if, a, even if you have a plan that's, that's not uh, ideal, uh, just having a plan is a step. That's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but uh, you'd be surprised how many people come to us. One of the first things we do is evaluate spending. It's kind of uh, counterintuitive to what you would expect. Most advisors will sit in front of you and ask you what you have. Uh, we want to know what you spend right. uh, because that's where uh, the biggest factor of, you know, how can we ensure that you're never going to outlive your money? And we don't know how to factor that unless we know what it is you're spending. So when we see folks with, with limited net worths but, but don't have any debt, or they get their spending under control, and they're in better shape than people with millions who are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. So, and I was told, you know, <clears throat> like most people know, I went through um, a tough time, and um, my ex remarried a race car driver with a lot of money, big business. And we were talking at my daughter's graduation, and he said, Wayne, we're very similar. You have debt and make X dollars. I have debt and make X dollars. Proportionately, I have the same as you. Yeah. The answer would be, as a businessman, as long as you can pay your debt, you're one step ahead of everybody else. Yes. And, and I would argue that the, the folks with a little bit more money uh, who have earned a significant amount of money or inherited a significant amount of money are in normally in worse shape than the folks that, that um, lived comfortably, uh, really understood how to save and control their debt. Because uh, a lot of folks that, that make a lot of money don't understand the debt factor. They don't understand the income factor that they're having to deal with. And income replacement is absolutely huge. If you have somebody that, that is earning $350,000 a year, and, and I ask normally, you know, I, that's a lot of money to replace mm -hmm. out of a portfolio versus $50,000 a year, um, you know, the, the amount of money that you need uh, to generate that kind of income is, is massive. Right. If you're making, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 a year and you reach your retirement age, you know what? You can always go and work at uh, one of the guard houses for yeah. $10 an hour and at least replace some of that income. Yeah. 80% of it. But if you're a $350,000 a year earner, First of all, you'd have a hard time working for eight, ten dollars an hour, <laughs> and it's not going to replace any of your income to talk about. It doesn't make a dent. Yeah, and that's that's one of the biggest fears that people have as they go into retirement is how do I, how do I ensure that I'm never going to run out, and how do I ensure that I'm not going to compromise my lifestyle at all, uh, which is ideal. Most people don't want to do that. Okay, so now I wasn't going to put you to the spot, but I changed my mind. <laughs> so happens all the time. I'm going to win the lottery because that's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. When I win my $350 million, of which I'll get $5 because the government takes the rest, <laughs> but whatever I get, right. first thing to do is come to a guy like you. Uh, do you do that kind of work? Yeah, I mean, the first thing to do is to take a step back and, and take a breath and don't go out and you know, buy 15 pieces of property. Uh, that's where most people get into trouble. They, they get this large lump sum, even if they have withholding taken out. Uh, they don't understand the, the tax implications of the things that they're buying. So you'll notice even, even celebrities today that are making a lot of money or were making a lot of money, they own property all over the place. They're paying property taxes and income tax on passive income and they're broke essentially. 
and that happens a lot to folks in the lottery. They, they don't realize how quickly they can burn through that money after taxes. So yes, getting some good solid advice uh, from a third party, somebody who's not emotionally involved <laughs> with your situation is whether you take it or not is always a good idea. Okay, so now <clears throat> I'm the basic American, make a hundred and let's say I make 125,000 a yeah. year. Okay, I'm 40. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and, and now I call you up and I come to your office. I call you up. Yeah. That conversation goes, hey, you know, I make 140 a year. I got uh, $48,000 in the bank. I own my house. I have uh, $30,000 left on my mortgage. We make an appointment to come to your office. Yeah. What do I bring with me? Everything. Um, it, as, as, as much, <laughs> ideally, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's always a good idea now to have she's a spouse. Now going to find out what I am. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, but the more information that you can provide, and, and we play hide and seek with people all the time. You know, they'll, they'll come to the office or we'll go to their home and, and we'll have a conversation. And, you know, three months later, another stock account appears. It doesn't make any sense to do that. If you are legitimately looking for advice, um, you need to disclose. You wouldn't go to the doctor and, and not take your clothes off. Well, if you're going to go see somebody who helps you prepare taxes, you need to share all your, all your information. If you're looking for solid advice in the financial advisory arena, the more information you can provide, the more accurate that feedback is going to be. So you're kind of wasting everyone's time if you're kind of... Including your own. <laughs> That's right. Okay, That's so right. I come to your office and I bring all my papers with me. Yeah. Basically, how does that meeting go? Basically, what we do is inventory everything. And we, my, one of my biggest, my first questions that I normally ask people is, you know, what are your biggest concerns? What's keeping you awake at night right now? And for some folks, it's, well, I've got, you know, we've we got a lot of people stuck in this sandwich uh, community where they're, they're caring for an adult mom or dad. Uh, and mom has stepped in and said, hey, we need help with our finances. I'm totally disorganized or... Or I, you know, it's confusing to me, and I need your help. And they're still taking care of a child as well. So they're handling their own finances, but they're handling mom and dad's as well. Um, we want to we want to help you with the the most critical concerns. And so for some, it's do I have enough money? Some of it's just get me organized. Tell me what I have. Tell me I'm going to be okay. <laughs> you know, I you know you guys are you know 35 to 54. That's the majority of you guys and. Um, I'm a little bit older than that, and I have my mom who's on her own, and uh, back then, they poorly prepared. Yeah. Um, the saving grace that my mom was smart enough to come up with was a, um, a pre-need, okay, for funeral arrangements, yeah. and long-term care. So that makes things a lot easier, but, you know, she did a reverse mortgage. And she still has maintenance and taxes to pay. And she only brings in, I'm just going to pick a number, $1,500 a month. But she lives with $1,700 a month yeah. and got $40,000 in the bank. How do you make that work? You know what? Or can you make it work? Yeah, the retirement landscape has changed significantly. You know, when my grandparents retired, both of them worked for GE for 32 years. They came out with a full pension. Uh, full Social Security, obviously, they had one child, they had no debt. You know, their their uh, reality is much different than today. Right. Uh, today, you know, 80% of our population does not have a pension plan. Significant. Uh, which means that you're relying on your own savings. Completely changes everything. And un unfortunately, the advisory community has not adjusted to that change in landscape very well. We still think you can pull 4% out of your out of your pension plan and be okay. Well. That's not always the, uh, that's not always true. So, you know, I think um, just really customizing uh, a plan and most people that I'm seeing right now are always gonna wanna work. Look, the baby boomer community is more active than my grandparents' generation or even my hey. parents' generation. Uh, so they wanna get out and work. They I'm wanna go out and dirt and, and I don't wanna stop. <laughs> right. So, you know, and, and I don't know if it's because of, of financial reasons that, that most people want to stay out there and stay active. A lot of people are doing it just for fun, but it's a good way to, to kind of take the edge off your income need anyway. You know, and even if it's not, you know, and I always say this, 
we're brought into this world and we're taught that we need to, most people are taught that you need to be of value to society. Yeah. And we think, like I, I think about retirement coming up and I'm saying, who's gonna do that? Why would I want to do that? Well, I don't play golf, so you're not going to find me there. And Marjan is not my thing. <laughs> and I can play a game of canasta, but that's not really what I'm going to do every day. But <clears throat> I'm blessed because I enjoy what I do. Yeah. I don't, you need to have a purpose. Yeah. When you lose, in my opinion, when you lose that purpose, then you almost lose a reason to live. Yes. You know, my mom, you know, my dad's passed. She doesn't need to help my brother, she doesn't need to help me financially, we're okay. Um, and we're back to helping her. Now, for us, it's interesting because you're right, the landscape has changed. When they were growing up, you took a job at a company, you worked it 25 years or whatever, you left with a pension and whatever. Yeah. People can't even stay at jobs for three years, five <laughs> years to say the least. Yeah. And there is no pension plans. I'm lucky enough to have for me, a small 401k, now I adopted it in my new marriage because it came from her divorce. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because I adopted it and um, it's part of what I'm now working on to increase. I, I think that it's really, really smart to get advice from somebody who has the answers. And I'm going to tell you a quick story. My previous wife had a lawsuit. We weren't married yet. And she made $192,000. In two years, it was gone. Mm -hmm. Two years, it was gone. Nothing was saved, nothing. She just went on a rampant spending that was just, it was almost unthinkable. Yeah. That's what I believe happens to people with lottery and windfalls. Yeah. So your information was really important. If you get a windfall, stop, step back for a second and think where that, what you're gonna do with that windfall and how you can utilize what you have to keep you moving forward constantly. Yeah. Sometimes that windfall is inheritance, by the way. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, there are some folks out there that are flat broke and that grandma dies and leaves them a million dollars. And like you said, it's we're off to the races. We're not paying off debt, <laughs> right. but we're going to Europe and we're doing this and we're buying fast cars. And it's just not a good idea, you know. Okay, we're running short of time. Someone want to use your service, how do they find you? Uh, they can find me by calling me, 561-798-3277. Uh, they can find me on the web uh, at BarnowskiFinancialGroup.com or BarnowskiFG.com. Uh, Barnowski Financial Group is my blog, and we put out all kinds of useful information on health, mobility, socialization, and money. Uh, so we're looking at the total holistic package of somebody's quality of life during retirement. So there's a lot of good information there. What town are you located in? Uh, we are located in Wellington, Florida, uh, as well as Indianapolis, Indiana. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so my wife was married in Indianapolis and uh, divorced in Indianapolis. Yeah. But um, she's actually Canadian and it took forever to get her status here because you can't find a good yeah, immigration attorney you... in, in India. <laughs> right. Okay, it's like, really? <laughs> Nobody but, uh, immigrates to India. <laughs> right. they, you know, her and her husband both came from Canada, her and her ex both came from Canada at the time, and it took them, they probably had 20 grand into it in uh, eight years and nothing. Yeah. You know, so really, where that fits in in this whole conversation is, if you want to get something done and you want to get it done right, then seek the help from the professional. It's simple, you can't do it on your own, and your cousin's uncle's brother's friend <laughs> doesn't always have the answer. That's right. I, you know, I want to thank you for coming on. It was a pleasure. Appreciate being here. Guys, it calls, before we leave, free consultation? Absolutely free. We don't charge for our services at all. Okay, so you know what? Kind of connect, find out where you're going. Sometimes it's a little embarrassing for people because you don't have a lot, but you know what? By not following up, you'll have less. And you'll look back and say, why didn't I? Why didn't I? Or I should have. So kind of think about it. I don't think that you're there to judge anybody. No. You're there to make their lives better and so that moving forward in their life, you can at least not
have to be on eight million tranquilizers and stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna worry about your bills. The key is sleeping better at night, I can tell you. That's yeah, our goal. That's, the <laughs> that's our goal. With that, everybody, we'll be right back. Thank you.